Welcome to the Portland Interior Designer Spotlight Series, featuring in-depth interviews with some of Portland's most influential and innovative interior designers. These public conversations, sponsored by Sealoom and PortlandArchitecture.com, are a nexus for Portland's vibrant design community, an opportunity for casual networking, and the perfect place to hear about the next big thing in Portland design. Now, please join us at Sealoom's beautiful ceiling showroom in the heart of Portland's Eastside Industrial District for Portland Interior Designer Spotlight. Garrison Hellinger is an interior designer with a passion for creating interior environments that are as warm and beautiful as they are comfortable and functional. But his entry into the world of interior design is quite different from most in his line of work. A former project manager for national retailer The Gap, Hoenger experienced a near-death work-related accident in 1999 that required him to learn how to read, write, and walk all over again. His occupational therapist suggested he take on a small bathroom remodel project to help regain motor skills. As he recovered, he took on more remodeling projects, buying and remodeling homes throughout San Francisco, which led to the realization that he could turn his new hobby into a career. In 2010, he formally launched Garrison Hollinger Interior Design. By 2011, he had five employees. Today, that number is 16, and the Portland Business Journal has recognized his firm as one of the 100 fastest growing companies in Oregon. He brings a deep understanding of color, form, and construction to all of the firm's work, and insists that each client's style be faithfully, yet surprisingly interpreted in every aspect of their project. Widely quoted within the industry, perhaps his greatest asset is the ability to instantly see the potential in any space and to artfully facilitate every detail from start to finish. Garrison Hollinger Interior Design's work continues to be featured in print and digital magazines including The Wall Street Journal, Embark Magazine, Portrait of Portland, Gray Magazine, House of 50, and more. Leading the discussion is noted architectural writer and founder of PortlandArchitecture.com, Brian Libby. Libby has written for numerous newspapers and magazines, including The New York Times, The Atlantic, The Oregonian, Salon, and Dwell, among others, primarily focusing on architecture and design. An award-winning filmmaker and photographer, he is also founder and editor of Portland Architecture, the city's leading blog devoted to local design and architecture. Here are Brian Libby and Garrison Hollinger. You know, one thing I also really enjoyed about, you know, the projects I've seen of yours and the ones I've been to is, is um, that um, there's a kind of effortless fusion that can go on sometimes between um, things like traditional and modern style. And, and uh, everybody has, you know, taste. It's probably another kind of spectrum, I guess. But, um, you know, um, are there any kind of rules of thumb, or, or how do you, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your your means of approaching that, and, and uh, um, you know, is it just you know every project is different, or, or um, you know, how do you how do you sort of face that? You know, I think that use almost always on our projects we start with practicality. Mm -hmm. There's this weird part of me that I just. If that sofa is not comfortable, I really, I, I don't want it in our project. Mm -hmm. So I think we start with practicality, and, and from there we kind of start working through it, um, and and trying to figure out, okay, how do we keep the line simple? Mm -hmm. You know, I think too, one one of the houses that we restored in San Francisco was an Edwardian, mm -hmm. and so we went. We didn't have pals though, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we went and checked out all these books, and I tried to buy them, and and I was doing all these studies, and I really learned that it's the Edwardian style is really based on on proportions for the way you should live in that home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So based on how many people live in the home, proportionally that's how the rooms are situated for you. Mm -hmm. And then also really thought about like, you know, how the eras move from Victorian into Edwardian, the craftsman. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something I've kind of always kept in the back of my head is that if we have the architecture is this these clean simple lines. Mm -hmm then I think you can kind of put whatever you want in your mm -hmm. furnishings. Um, if we're dealing with, you know, some of our homes that we're known for is this Hampton style, mm -hmm. New mm -hmm. England. And those projects, um, they're just so grand. Mm -hmm. And we almost, like, you, you just almost have to, like, build a lumber yard next to you because there's so much millwork going in. Mm -hmm. um, and those, I say, that's now, I love that mix, right? Mm -hmm. So now we've got all this ornamentation, the beautiful crown, the high stacked baseboards. That you can add in contemporary. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, yeah. And we try to teach people, too, that, you know, when you walk on this really, I, I've always had this vision. I don't hike a lot, but I've thought about it. Um, <laughs> you sound like me. I have. I've, 
you know, and I, and I, when I've thought about it, um, is that you, you come across this really great hike, and there's, you know, the trees are there, and you're trying to look out and see the mountains or whatever the view is. Mm -hmm. It's never perfect in this view of a prairie, mm -hmm. right? It's always framed by limbs and, and these beautiful, like, flowers. And, mm -hmm. and so we try to tell people that and the same thing with your home. Mm -hmm. Just because you have this beautiful crown and this trim and all these moldings, it's okay to cover them a little bit. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. nature, we wouldn't leave this stark window just bare, mm -hmm. right? So it's mm -hmm. okay to put a few draperies or put some, sometimes we'll put artwork on this beautiful paneled walls and they just, it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of calms down, I think, the seriousness of the house. Mm -hmm. Wait, if your firm was in San Francisco, do you th how different do you think it might be? I'd probably still be in my attic, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? Like I was, what, three or four years ago? Uh -huh. um, I don't know, it's, uh, you'd, what would You'd be it? able to get better Chinese food. Uh, we were just talking mm -hmm. about that today, right? Mm -hmm. And Indian food, mm -hmm. a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, there's this, there's this, there is something about when we're um, when I'm contacted by editors or other publicists that are trying to find out what Portland's all about, mm -hmm. um, they want to know that Portland vibe and that I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. It's not in us. And it's certainly something um, more than Portlandia and, and beards and and you know artisan honey. And, yeah, I love the craftsman, right? Like we mm -hmm. love. Who doesn't mm -hmm. love this beautiful live edge table? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of done with it though a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's just me, right? As a designer. We, I just want to move on. Mm -hmm. Next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, so, you know, I think in, for Portland, you, it's odd though, we get calls now from the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> so I, I mean, think that's uh, kind of, it's very ironic, right? We're, I think we're installing, um, I don't know when that is, Nick, in a couple weeks we're installing a house mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, and we're wrapping up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a part kind of uh, in, you know, obviously going through this, uh, through a project and going on that journey with clients, there's many stage of it, stages of it. Is there a, a kind of part of the process that you enjoy the most or, or is there an aspect of your job that you feel like is where you're sort of at your best? Well, it's not shopping, right? <laughs> I hate the catalogs and the shopping. That's just uh -huh. not me. And that would be a lot of people's favorite. Oh, yeah, they know. It's not me. I have a great team. <laughs> <laughs> They're good at mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, You know, my favorite part is when I dig into the conversation about, well, when you get out of the shower and you go to your closet, where do you, how do you put your underwear? And where do you, are you folded? Are you, are you doing mm -hmm. hang things? Mm -hmm. I love to find out how people live. Mm -hmm. I also want to know about their kitchen and how do you use your kitchen and mm -hmm. um, do, do you like your cutting boards out or like where do you like things mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to me that's my favorite part mm -hmm. I just I love to know how people are going to use their home mm -hmm. and then what we do is we enhance it and and, and we always talk about we I learn more from moms than I do from anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. <laughs> the moms teach us like how to create these cubbies for every kid's basket, and they do the laundry. Mm -hmm. and they put the basket in the cubby, and now the kid comes and gets their laundry. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. doesn't put it up anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have another mom who taught us. You you put this the, the sick chair in her bedroom, mm -hmm. in the master bedroom. So the kids don't climb into your bed. The kids go over on the chaise, mm -hmm. and on a sick night when they come in and wake you up, you put them in their little sick chair. Mm -hmm. Like you learn all these great things from the families, and I, I love that part mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my favorite part. Yeah, there's a kind of investigation that goes on. You're sort of dropping into these people's lives for uh, a time, and, and really kind of, you know, you're in your home, in, a, in their home with them, or you're creating a home for them, yeah. and it's, it's, you know, there's, it's it's kind of an intimate thing, you know. It's like being—I don't know—being their doctor or something. One, well, they can't do without you. Mm-hmm. It's—it's mm -hmm. it's this really wonderful feeling that you've created such a sense of need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that they're just not sure how to make a decision. You know, I need to design the new pantry. Can you come help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're like, really? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. that's fun, right? Or and you know, I also love one of my other favorite things is just to help a client who's finished a home and we go in and help them with their Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. love that. I just mm -hmm. think that's so cool. And that's the one part of me that loves to decorate, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I love that finishing. Um, I think part of retail taught me that um, there things are done in threes and scale is really important. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and also this beauty that you can kind of relate to that it's not just a piece of artwork from a store, mm -hmm. but something that you found. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can come back in and we've given the size to someone and they go on a trip and they roll up the canvas and mail it back mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. we go get it framed, Mm -hmm. I, I want to be, I, I'd like to deliver it. 
Right. That's great. I want to take credit for that. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> lot of it is about the human relationships, and you yeah. were saying you like people, and so yeah. you know that becomes part of it. And I, and I wanted to ask you uh, about your your inspirations as well in, in that, uh, you know, especially given the fact that you have a little bit different path and, and didn't, uh, if I remember right, didn't go to, you know, design school or that something like that and had a different career. And so, um, and yet this was something you were you doing as a hobby initially. And, and so, you know, what were some of the things as you, you know, beca started to become close? get closer to becoming a real designer or a professional designer you know what what are when i ask about inspirations you know i wonder if you could talk about that and it does it could be something design related or it could be you know something just um yeah. that is arts and culture related as well but you know um you know uh, i'd love to hear about your inspirations that's a good question um <laughs> well coming from kansas uh <laughs> not a lot of arts and culture mm -hmm. or that at least i was exposed to uh, maybe they hid it from me i don't know um but i you know i um wow that was a good question um, <laughs> i mean like were you uh were you rearranging furniture as a kid and that kind of thing yeah i had issues mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. i just didn't know like uh, yeah, I mean, I do remember I would rearrange the furniture, and mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was the odd kid. Wow, this is good. You did good. So I do remember <laughs> as a kid now, my brother would remind me that, so when Halloween would come down, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we would buy, so we, I don't know, we had like these costumes that matched with the mask. It's not like you do now, and mm -hmm. you make something up cool, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I would like take all the leftover decorations and all the costumes and hang all over my room. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that was my, leave it, it's mine, leave mm -hmm, it alone. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Christmas. My poor dad, ugh. So as soon as Christmas would come down all that stuff would go in my room I had it <laughs> everywhere right uh -huh, uh -huh. so I they probably squashed that early on in uh -huh. Kansas uh -huh, yeah um, but you know it kind of came out um, I would say though you know the, the big thing for me, I was very fortunate right when I worked for the gap um, mm -hmm. it was a growing company it was fast and furious my department um, I think there was five of us when I first went to corporate to mm -hmm. open Old Navy mm -hmm. um, it grew quickly to over 200 employees in mm -hmm. the corporate offices and we were traveling um, so a lot of my inspiration came from hotel rooms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would just be I, I was in awe and I got to travel to other countries for the mm -hmm. for the Gap, mm -hmm. um, but I was just I was in awe to go to these amazing hotels mm -hmm. all over the country, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes they were long, you know, 16, 18 hour days mm -hmm. traveling and working and developing technology. Um, but you know, it's that was a lot of my inspiration, and just you know, being from a small town, um, going to the big city, mm -hmm. it's very inspiring. Yeah, um, yeah, that was my journey as well. Oh, and to see flashy and reflective quality buildings, I'd never seen anything. Mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Walmart and TGY didn't have that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. but I think that was, that's still a big part. Oh, I'm, I'm very, I, I love seeing architecture. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. and, um, that's that's really I think a driving point. Fashion is I think it's very interesting, right? Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. a very ever since my accident I'm very tactile. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. uh, touch is really important, and so you'll see that in a lot of our designs um, we use very textural pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's something I feel like I really can relate to, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. important. Yeah, um, I, I remember looking at a fireplace in a recent house of yours, and and it had this this uh, the, this these round stones that uh, uh, oh. were 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 uh, Almost quietly outrageous in a fun way. A little exaggerated. Way, you know? uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and you, I, I feel like I saw qualities like that in, in a number of projects. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I also wondered if, uh, uh, you know, a couple of times you've sort of mentioned uh, spatial order and, mm. and, and that kind of idea. And uh, also when you were sort of talking about, you know, pinning up things on your wall as a kid, I, it, it almost sounded like a, a kind of, um, almost like a, in some ways, almost like a set designer's approach yeah. to interior design and that kind of <laughs> thing and so I wondered you know if like the theater or the cinema was was something that had influenced you as well I they never showed me that growing up I know I, I know there was one there um, <laughs> yeah you know I didn't understand I, mm -hmm. I didn't growing up I really wasn't exposed to mm -hmm. theater or mm -hmm. um, I, I'd heard but about maybe you kind of think like uh, someone who could have had that well profession. it's all smoke and mirrors it's drama yeah. right that's what we do mm -hmm. I think and that was probably part of our experience in um, our first home mm -hmm. you know and, and having your first apartment mm -hmm. right it's really a dramatic effect of I'm going to make this apartment that's mm -hmm. eight foot three ceilings look like they're ten mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you put these drapes up and 
oh, in a year it doesn't look so good, but mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it is drama, right? It's kind of the, you know, I think that's what we're all just trying to expose um, our guests to what our taste is. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that I think is, for me, is kind of the driving point is, you know, and one of the things that an early on um, employee, you know, kind of learned as we w work with clients is, um, you know, it's, it's really difficult because when the client hires us and I go and meet, I meet every new client. Mm -hmm. And so as we go out and we meet them and we start working with them, um, they are relating to me and the portfolio. And so uh, even though we have um, 19 or 20 employees, uh, we have to delegate, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, but the employee doesn't always get to work with the client. Mm -hmm. So what we've learned is that the employee, uh, the designer, has to work for me. Yeah. And they have to, I have to be their client. That can be confusing because here it is, there's a this amazing project that's going on in Florida or mm -hmm. Connecticut or mm -hmm. Lake Oswego, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the designer never gets to meet them. They never get to see the space. Mm -hmm. So instead, I'm channeling through that, and that's what works, though. We, we found that when a designer tries to put their spin on it for the client and the homeowner, and, and they want to put their own vibe on it, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is, but I think um, for what we're trying to do is, I've, I do have this set um, model mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what works. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe I'm not very good at articulating it sometimes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but that is what works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I think that it's uh, that's where we hit the home run um, is just in collaboration. You know? Yeah, I love that part. Yeah. Yeah, um, you have a chance to be sort of like a, a curator in a certain sense of, of choosing the work of artists or right. furniture makers, and, and you know it's a, that's something some of our other guests for this series have talked about is is the chance to sort of you know enable their sometimes their artist friends or, or just mm. people who they're a fan of. So right. it's exciting. Well, that is it's exciting to go back now. We're now calling upon people that kind of artists that I stalked in San Francisco. I couldn't really afford to buy from them, you mm -hmm. know, but I would mm -hmm. stalk them. <laughs> I would ask to take their picture with them and, you know, and, uh -huh. and now it's kind of fun. We get to go back and actually buy art from them. And that's mm -hmm. really fun. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, we, we really learned that I think it's very important if you're going to hire me or a design team, we really should complete one room. Um, I, I, I learned early on that we would, I would just kind of do whatever, right? Like, oh, you want a new bed? You want a new sofa? You want new pillows? Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, the, but what I've learned is that, you know, it's our best clients come from referrals because um, they know the worst about us. Mm -hmm, they know mm -hmm. the best about us. Yeah. And if someone comes over to your dinner party and they, they ask you, oh, what'd you guys hire the designer for? Mm -hmm. Oh, he picked that sofa and that bed. Oh, how much you spend? Mm. Yeah. But if they if they come in and they walk in and they see this beautiful dining room or a beautiful living room and we completed it, mm -hmm. then there's I think they understand what value we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes you don't always get to use those pieces you want to mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. an artist or from say a beautiful store like the joinery. Mm -hmm. um, but it's you try to work in those things that you love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and you've had the opportunity to do, you know, a mix of residential and, and commercial or, you know, retail, that sort of thing. It, is, I wonder, uh, um, you know, it, it, is the experience really different when you go from one type of project to another or is it still essentially the same? And, and is there anything that you, any type of project that you haven't done that you would like to do? Um, hmm. I would think that... The, the projects are different, right? I think between, and it's not that difficult for me for some reason mm -hmm. to switch off and on. I think, um, you know, we're, I'm very, I'm a very organized um, business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm probably very fiscally conservative. Mm -hmm. And so we run a tight ship and, and we've divided off people into departments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we try to have people that are experts at what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that allows me to jump from meeting to meeting, from client to client, and mm -hmm. not have, I don't have a lot of, um, I'm disorder mm -hmm. of going from that project mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and relying on those designers within the firm to really be the experts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I think the one part what I do find though is 
oh my gosh, I want to mix them up though. Mm -hmm. Like I'm mm -hmm. dying to bring commercial over to residential, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just, oh, yeah. you, I, there's materials you want to use yeah. and elements and scale, mm -hmm. and we don't mm -hmm. get to do that. Yeah, um, yeah. Or there's beautiful fabrics that you want to bring in, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, to commercial and they're not going to hold up. And there can be scales that, that each one kind of desires of the other. There can be a kind yeah. of lobby that wants to behave like someone's living room, even if, you know, it's an entirely different size space or, or the reverse might be mm -hmm. true as well. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's fun, right? Because then it, it gives us that experience. And I, I think what happened, you know, um, when I first started the company um, at the end of 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. um, everyone really was talking about the W Hotel. Mm -hmm. oh, they, want, they wanted their master bedroom to be the hotel experience. Mm -hmm. Well, it's flipped. Now the hotels, the boutique hotels, they want their hotel to be the home experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's really unusual what has <laughs> happened, um, and I think that you know that would be fun. I think if you talk about a project that we've not done, um, we're doing some small hospitality projects. Um, we're doing many uh, unbelievable amount of multi-family mm -hmm. uh, mixed-use projects, mm -hmm. and residential is our core mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. business that I love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think a boutique hotel would be fun mm -hmm. from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it would have to be where we could put the flavor on it, like it feels like home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, really there's small. certainly a lot of hotels being built these days, so uh, maybe yeah. you'll get your chance. Yeah, maybe so. Um, uh, well, maybe this might be a good time to uh, turn it over to audience questions. Uh, um, uh, you're probably going to hear us repeat the question for the purposes of the video, but uh, would anybody like to ask Harrison a question? Right there? Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about how you grew your business so fast? Oh, how you grew your business so fast. There, see, I repeated the question. Thank you. <laughs> it definitely was not a business plan. Um, you know, I really, I, I was telling Brian earlier, I, I think one of the unique um, stances that I took uh, was I really created a, a really great relationship with a top photographer in town and I banked every bit of money, even my own earnings, I put it back into the company. Um, and I, we, we shot all these portfolios. We, we don't even use them now. Um, those were my early projects, right? And so I think, you know, working with Blackstone Edge is, uh, it was a big point for me and I, I invested all this money and I, I was able to put up, there was this thing called House uh, or Who's, right? I didn't even know what it was. It was just a place. <laughs> the website. Yeah. Right? House.com. It was a place to store imagery. And so I was just putting my portfolio up there. It was cheaper than a website. I didn't know how to build a website. And then it just kind of took off. Um, and so I think that I think my imagery and, and being available for regional magazines, national, that they could have a, a nice pool of photography to pull from, I really think that was it. And then also is the next step, is okay? The next part of that would be uh, I don't have the skills and the talent that's needed, right? So hiring the right people. Um, and that's difficult. It's it's personal and it's 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 hard right to find that team um, and so that was that's, that's the worst growing part I think of a fast growing business um, was just the I and I couldn't say no to clients <laughs> <laughs> it was so exciting you know <laughs> so I just kept saying yes and then we'd hire people and try and make that work but it was also a tough time in 2010 um, and I think that made me work harder um, because people were coming out of this recession, and so it made me really think about the business that I was putting together. And you have, uh, I was noticing, I mentioned this to you before we began, but I was noticing that Garrison has a very impressive 26,000 Twitter followers. And so, you know, how much, uh, were you putting a lot of effort into social media kind of from the beginning as well, or that kind of thing? And, you know, it seems like marketing is something you pay attention to. Yeah, it was um, definitely, I. I love that part of it. It was just kind of fun to put it out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and that's the, that. That was the part of it for me. I think um, in this market, uh, there weren't a lot of people that were trying very hard, <laughs> um, and so I just would put my photos anywhere they would let me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and if anything, it was more fun. But I think what happened was is it it really garnered attention from the national brands. That's who really started paying attention quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then we when we saw uh, so. Three years ago, I think, uh, we saw Martha Stewart retweeted us. And I'm like, whoa. So that was like, 
That was crazy. <laughs> Pop the champagne corks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? I have one more. Sure. So can, just looking back, um, for someone who aspires to grow their business fast, can you say one thing that you would like be aware of this pothole? Do you have one thing you would say? Um, don't do this. Yeah, what's no. the pothole oh. to come across? Get a good attorney. <laughs> get a good attorney uh -oh. right because I didn't know I just went online and downloaded contracts and I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing um, but I would say get a great attorney to write a really great contract because um, I've never had anyone have any uh, litigation or uh, lawsuit or lien against us but I think that it's that's that extra step of being professional hire people that do the job that you can't do. Hire the bookkeeper. Like I hired a bookkeeper within the first few months that I started and it was a part-time person and she would come to the house. I was in my attic and walk by the dogs and go up to the attic and do that. But you know, it's, I would say hire the people that are professional to do what you can't do. If you find that, and I found that I was the person who wouldn't send out invoices for a month or two, um, not good. So that's what I would say is like hire people that can do the professional pieces you can't. Mm. Mm. Anybody else out there? Are there any books that you would recommend or anything that you reference for somebody that hasn't gone to school but wants to do what? Well, were you reading books on how to become an interior designer? Yeah. Any, like, interior design Bibles? That's a great question. Um, I did read a lot of books um, to try and understand. I really wanted to understand um, spatial issues. Um, so there's uh, Jeffrey Buhar. Um, he has a really amazing book. Um, and one of his favorite things to do is he has like an elongated living room, right? Looks just like a designer's nightmare. Um, and he would show five different ways to do the furniture. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. That's awesome. um, What's it called? So, I ha you know, I I'm not sure his uh, last name is B U H R E R, Jeffrey. You are? You are? Bearer? Bearer? Yeah. But, um, and it's a, I'm, I don't know if it's in production again, um, but you can email me. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that, that for me was spatial, right? It's just trying to understand how to better use spaces. Uh, how important is green, sustainable, healthy living to your clients? And what would be the top three things that would come to the top? That yeah, sustainability. I didn't touch upon that. You know, I think the best part of sustainability in our market is um, using local resources. That is the number one. I think that a lot of times we talk about green and we talk about um, you know trying to have that focus, and and then yet I hear about someone shipping a container across the co the country. Um, so I think by using local resources, um, you know, like our upholstery shops um, and also the people who are locally working and not driving hundreds of miles to do their work is the number one. The, the next topic that we hear the most though is the off-gassing. We're still hearing um, many people are developing more and more allergies um, and health issues because of all the off-gassing um, with adhesives, backing to materials. Um, it's changing, right? It's we, we, Even we, carpets and stuff like that sometimes. Yeah, and we're we're hearing it's getting better, but I think that part of it is is also we're we're building tighter homes that don't vent properly. Mm, mm. Yeah, um, like passive houses are like a thermos. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I'm not sure it's all positive, right? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I would say you know in, in design it's uh, I don't know it's I have a little hard time selling the green um, theory. Um, I'm selling pretty, and pretty isn't always green, right? We're using a lot of fabrics and petroleum-based materials, and so I think we have to be kind of honest with people mm. about mm. it. Well, it sounds like that's about uh, it, but uh, I'd like to thank you, Garrison. This has been a really super conversation, and let's uh, give our guest a hand if we can. <laughs>